Welcome to your Around the Peninsula. I'm Katusa Private Yoon Chan Jang. It's not every day that an American precision dance group visits Korea, but for one day, this held true at Camp Humphreys. Specialist Aaron Loy reports. Tyler Junior College's Apache Bells were established in 1947, and in their 66th year, they visited Camp Humphreys to conduct a dance clinic for young girls. Sophomore line member Ariana Perez can relate to the girls around her. It makes me feel to be working with young girls very excited. I love kids. I have five siblings of my own and four sisters, and I got one brother, which I'm happy for. <laughs> but it's just so exciting to just like come and like teach them a dance and give them something a little new and get them in that little girly feeling and be able to put like a little makeup on and perform a little dance because I'm pretty sure they do that at home and they finally get to get on the stage. For seven-year-old Riley Worth, dancing was definitely the highlight. Um, I like going on the stage because they teach us how to dance and um, they, they're really happy because they teach us how to dance. How does it make you feel? Good. Good? Good, happy. Ultimately, Perez hopes the experience provided the girls with more than just dance moves. The thing that I hope most that the young girls take from this event is that you are beautiful, no matter what, and that you don't have to be on a stage and you don't have to have makeup to prove that, that you are going to be a wonderful person inside and out, and that you are here to learn something, and it's to be very confident of yourself. And as long as you have confidence, no matter what, that's all you need. Specialist Aaron Loy, Camp Humphreys, Korea. <laughs> the Apache Bells and young girls also used what they had learned and performed for the installation later that evening. Consuming the right nutrients and proper exercise supports the activities of day-to-day -day living. Specialist Marquetta Gibson shows us how one Army community service program teaches soldiers and family members how to make healthy choices. Taking steps towards creating healthy habits helps your body stay active and strong. Camp Henry's Army Community Services and the Pregnancy Postpartum Physical Training Program teaches soldiers how to make changes in their diets. Eating healthy and exercising is a good way to maintain yourself um, not only busy, but like stretching out your body and getting ready for labor. That way when baby is growing in your body, it's going to grow very healthy. PFC Cabrera not only learns how to control her diet to protect the health of her unborn baby, she is taught multiple exercises to enhance her sleep. PFC Cabrera is fairly new to our program. Her tendency uh, to kind of not be, um, not be sure of why or what we're doing our exercises for uh, is what my role is, is to reinforce. There's a, there's a reason behind the exercises that we do. And so she's, um, she's, she's coming along and understanding that she's got a lot of changes ahead of her because she's a new mom now, and, uh, and, that's what she's, uh, uh, and that's what she's experiencing now. It's hard to make the healthy choices, but whatever I eat healthy, the baby's eating healthy. And if I eat something bad, like it doesn't only affect the baby, but it affects me as well. Specialist Marquita Gibson, Kent Walker, Korea. The training is designed to help soldiers meet their unique physical needs through a standardized physical training and educational program. In the Army, squad mates usually come and go with each PCS season. Specialist Tyler Ferris has the story of two 8th Army bandmates with a long history together. If you're at an 8th Army Band concert and notice two of the musicians making eyes at each other, well, there is a good reason for it. We met and fell in love at Max. No, 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 no. We've been married for four years. We, we celebrated our fourth anniversary here in Korea. Usually when people ask us how we met, um, I tell them we met and fell in love and got married at MEPS. But we've been married for four years. We got married in Cleveland, Ohio. So, how did they meet? Well, we were in college together at the University of North Texas. I had a party and he crashed it. I crashed one of her parties. Basically, Sorry. After school, Victoria's work put her in contact with local military bands. As they learned about the bands, they saw an opportunity to do something special together. 
I think at the end of basic training, we realized what the accomplishment really was, that we both finished at the same time. We watched a lot of our peers uh, maybe get held back for one reason or another, and we both finished at the same time. We went to AIT together, and we got the chance to work together for the first time, I think, professionally as musicians. This is something we sought out to do. We sought out to be professional musicians, and now in the Army, we get an opportunity to do that while being soldiers and representing other soldiers throughout the world. It's really fun to look over and see him there, and we didn't spend a whole lot of time together as civilians because we lived in D.C. and I had a long commute and he was in school, so it's nice, it's been good to spend a lot of time together. It's a fantastic opportunity for us to be here and to be here together. Specialist Tyler Ferris, USAG Yongsan, Korea. The Chamberlains are leaving Korea and heading to Germany in September. Do you think the library has nothing but dusty old books? If you do, you're wrong, and Katusa Corporal Lee Seok Go is about to hit you with some knowledge about our Yongsan Library. Sometimes people think library is just a place for books. Here, Yongsan Library does have many books. Actually, 40,000 books here. New books, classic books, children's and research. Books are great, but to keep with the times, the library needs to offer more than that. There are 53 computers here, each with commercial internet, military network access, or online library catalogs. If you're working on something, for example, coursework, you can print from here as well. In the digital library area, you can check out one of 18,000 DVDs and Blu-rays here. Or if music's your thing, check out one of 12,000 CDs here. The Yongsan Library is working with ebooks too, so if you're a reader, bring your device and check some of them out. I love my library. I like people, and we are here for people support uh, military dependent, and here for uh, children. We have all different kind of uh, free material to check out. We are here for you. So if you like reading, movies, music, internet, or even school, come to Yongsan Library and check this out. I'm Katsuo Kopper. Ko, Yongsan, Korea. The Yongsan Library has the highest circulation of books of any military library on an installation in the world. As screams echo through the base exchange, security forces airmen don't bat an eye. They have one thing on their mind, and that's saving lives. Senior Airman Lindy Pata takes us to Osan Air Base, where Security Forces Airmen Park take in vital training. Airmen from Osan's 51st Security Forces Squadron are geared up, divided into teams, and ready to apprehend an active shooter loose inside the base exchange. One of many different scenarios they'll be running through during this active shooter exercise. The instructors were from Analytic Services Incorporated, and they come down, they're a civilian contract agency, and they come down and they give us the training. We saw all kinds of scenarios based on real life events. Everything from children shootings in, in the high school or middle school, hostage situations, Anything you could imagine, we, we saw it throughout the entire week. Civilians volunteered to participate in the exercise as role players who are either injured or being held hostage, bringing a bit of reality to the training. I was a screamer. I'd go and like tell them somebody was hurt. It's pretty cool. It's cool what they do. With multiple scenarios throughout the exchange, each team had the opportunity to test their skills and share what they've learned. The other people that were in the course are now certified to train other people on it because this was a train the trainer course so they can take that back to their flights and when they get downtime or training days they can do training with their troops as well most airmen would agree knowing what to do in the event of an active shooter improves the odds of apprehending the assailant and saving lives making training exercises like this essential for mission continuation senior airman lindy pata osan air base korea this is just one of the many exercises airmen go through to increase readiness. That was your Around the Peninsula for Thursday, March 20th. From all of us at AFN, enjoy your evening. Donating blood doesn't have to be scary. 
Even though you are in Korea, you can still donate. Call your local hospital or Red Cross to get information on upcoming blood drives.